Let us discuss a few important questions often asked in data science interviews. These questions are mostly on model building process. Of course, in interviews, you would be asked on non-technical questions as well, but we will be taking uh, a few uh, important questions on model building. Uh, often asked to uh, people who are either beginners in data science or people with less number of years in data science. One of the commonly asked question is, uh, what are the, uh, you know, the common data quality issues faced in modeling? When you build models, you face a number of data quality issues. And before you start building model, uh, you need to handle these issues or overcome this issue. Uh, because otherwise, you, you will not have a good model. The issues you could face are, there could be issues with data type. Okay, like uh, values in column should be of same data type, right? Uh, if you have a, a column, let's say salary, right? Salary, it has to be a number. It cannot have a text value, right? Similar issues can also be found in other columns. So ensure that the data quality, uh, the data type uh, of a particular uh, column has to be same throughout. Otherwise, it's a data quality issue, and you need to, uh, you know, correct that first. Range constraints. Like some data um, always fall in a particular range. For instance, probability. Now, probability uh, always has a minimum value of 0 and maximum value of 1. It cannot be a negative number and it cannot uh, go beyond uh, 1. It has to be, uh, be between 0 and 1. So that's a range constraint. That is always there for you know a number of uh, different uh, variables and ensure that you you check that before you um, you know go ahead with modeling mandatory constraint uh, in certain um, data in certain variables uh, they cannot have zeros or empty values um, so ensure that it doesn't have a particular value it could be zero it could be a certain number or it could be uh, it could be the case that the value, uh, the, co the column cannot be empty. Okay, so that is uh, another important check. Uh, unique constraint. Um, a field must be unique across uh, across data sets. Uh, like if you are having several data sets across, uh, you know, uh, different projects, um, your uh, your variable should have unique definitions or unique values across all the data set. It cannot have multiple um, values. Uh, otherwise, you know, that's an erroneous data and ensure that uh, it, it gets captured before you build models. Value constraint. So, uh, for instance, gender uh, can only have male and female. It cannot have four or five values, right? So, that's one important check ensure to do. Uh, constraint on pattern, okay? Um, for instance, uh, if you are having a data on phone uh, numbers, then uh, sometimes it has to be, uh, you know, uh, it has to be uh, with the ISD code and the ISD code is between bracket. Ensure that it's proper for all the data points. Spelling error. Sometimes your data could have a spelling error. You know, that could cause issues. Uh, missing values uh, and the reason behind it. This is very, very... Uh, uh, important uh, you know data quality issues to be checked and ensure that you find a reason behind uh, why is the data uh, missing in a particular uh, uh, column outlier detection outliers uh, are a big problem in, de in in modeling ensure that you detect outliers uh, and remediate before you start building models uh, cross field validation for instance the date of uh, somebody is joining the firm cannot be before the date of his birth, right? The simple thing. Or date of a patient uh, uh, discharge from hospital cannot be before date of his admission to the hospital. So these are very small checks, but sometimes, you know, because of, uh, uh, you know, erroneous data, because of, uh, you know, data received from wrong um, resources, you might find such issues and ensure that, you know, all these uh, issues have been taken care of before you start building models. Another important question often asks is, what is the life cycle of a data science or analytics project? So simple questions, but uh, even uh, even sometimes uh, experienced uh, data science uh, 
people uh, make mistakes while answering questions. The reason is because uh, the steps involved in data science or analytics projects uh, differs uh, across domains and, and it also differs uh, depending on which companies you are working for. But there are some uh, important steps that, uh, that are common uh, between uh, data science projects across domains. First one is data acquisitions. So the first thing is to get data from internal and external sources and collate them and ensure that you have a proper data in place before. So that's the second step. And we also, you know, looked at what are the data cleaning steps or data quality issues that you might face. So all that has to be done in the step. Modeling. Then you go ahead with building models using statistical algorithm or machine learning algorithm. And you validate your model and select the best model. Uh, then you evaluate and interpret the models. Models are evaluated and tweaked so as to improve performance. And then you deploy models uh, to ensure that uh, your model is in production and working fine. And once the model is there in the production, you monitor on a regular basis to ensure that model is performing well. Just in case you find that model is not working fi uh, fine during the monitoring process, then you flag that and then you rebuild the model or re-estimate the model. So these are the common steps. Again, it all depends on which project you are working in and there could be several changes to these uh, you know, steps. How do you control bias in your model? Well, you can control bias in the model by doing the following things. Ensure that the sample that you are using uh, to build model is representative. And what do we mean by representative? That means the distribution of uh, different, uh, you know, different variables should be same across samples, okay, or population and sample. You have a large population and you take a sample from that. This is population and this is sample, okay. And you have, let's say, two variables, uh, you know, V1 and V2, uh, and you have taken sample as v1 dash and v2 dash. So if the mean, the standard deviation, okay, uh, and then uh, maybe the distribution, the sample distribution, so all that has to be similar in also in this sample and that only then it is a representative, otherwise it, it is not. So the sample statistics should more or less match if not exactly same, at least to be very close to each other. So that's representative. There are also other statistical tests to, pro uh, to, to uh, prove that your sample is representative. But even without statistical tests, you can, um, you can test whether your sample is representative or not. Ensure that you have a large sample to build model. Uh, that always helps. Uh, include all important predictors. Uh, otherwise, you will be uh, not having a very good model. Ensure that as many predict predictors are tried out at least. Not all predictors are going to be in the final model, but ensure that all the predictors have been tried in the model. Avoid using highly correlated variable. Otherwise, uh, that could create issues or that could uh, bring down the performance of the model on several occasions. And also uh, create issues while uh, interpreting the models. So that uh, should be uh, kept in mind. Randomize the sample selection. When you s take a sample, ensure that it's a random sample. There should not be any bias in that. So the sample selection should be um, simple random or stratified random sampling and, and you know such method has to be uh, used. Explain what is the lift of a model. Uh, so lift is an indicator to measure how effective the model and often in marketing uh, analytics, in, in credit risk analytics, LIPT is a very uh, commonly used uh, matrix used to evaluate uh, model performance in the productions. And LIF, LIPT um, is, is given by target response uh, divided by the average response. So for instance, let's say that the model has been built for a, a click through rate of ads. So the CTR is 5% without the model and CTR is 15% after the model has been in use. Then the lift would be just 15 by 5, which is 3. 
although it's simple to calculate, but it normally in productions or when we um, you know find it out uh, in real uses, we uh, do it for different quantiles and and um, use that as a measure uh, for a marketing strategy or risk strategy. So how do we do that? Let's say, for instance we calculate this slip using the same formula for let's say 10 quartiles okay uh, so so that would be you know for every percentile um, so, uh, sorry for every decile we would have a lift right so decile 1 2 up to 10 and we'll have a lift corresponding lift right so if you have that in place we can say that a certain percent of click through rate can be achieved by just looking at the first two quartiles, uh, first two deciles, and that would be very useful because given the cost involved in uh, you know marketing programs or handling risk, it is always good to look at only the top quartiles. And what is the click-through rate in the top um, deciles is very important from a strategy point of view. So, for instance, we can say that 60% of this CTR or click-through rate is happening in just the 20% of the ads. Or the top two deciles uh, which, which have been scored by the models. So that's exactly uh, is lift used for. Explain identification handling of outliers. Uh, well, how do you identify outliers? Firstly, through visualization, you plot the data and you will find many data points, you know, very different uh, from the uh, other data points. Only a section of data points are you know at a very distance from the uh, usual data points or most other data points there there could be outliers um, other methods could be use the three sigma rule like anything that lies beyond uh, three standard deviation from the mean can be treated as a uh, outlier although this is not a rule of thumb many other consideration has to be made whether that actually affects your model greatly or not is that an important variable is that an uh, uh, you know measurement uh, issue or or is a proper data? So all that has to be uh, taken into consideration. And in case you have only small number of data points lying in that area, then that there is hardly an issue in that. Other methods could be using box plot, you know QQ plots, um, and then there are statistical measures like measuring the Cook's distance and you know taking a threshold. And, and anything that is beyond the threshold, just remove them. So that's uh, one way of uh, identifying outliers. How to handle them? So uh, you can remove them from the data if there is hardly any effect on the model. Um, sometimes if you uh, transform the variable, you take logarithm transformation or any other type of transformation, then also outliers uh, effect are reduced and then you have a bit, uh, better uh, data in place. Uh, in case you cannot remove them, then you can use a robust uh, statistical estimation methods like robust regression is one method which, which uh, helps getting rid of outliers. All right, you can also use uh, weight of evidence often used in credit risk industry, which uh, you know helps you to you know get rid of outliers. So weight of evidence transformation of variables uh, uh, completely, uh, you know, get rid of helps in getting rid of outliers. Explain what is curse of dimensionality in in modeling point of view. So this is often cited when data is of high dimension. That means there are a lot of variables, and that actually creates problem. Although it helps uh, in, in some sense, but it also creates issues. It uh, reduces the number of uh, options that you have in terms of choosing algorithms. Not all algorithms can be very effective in high dimension. In fact, some of the algorithm cannot be estimated. So if you're using uh, an ordinary least square algorithm, your number of uh, independent variable has to be less than the total number of data points. Okay, otherwise OLS cannot be uh, Estimated. In fact, many other algorithms cannot be estimated uh, through this. So, data availability is an issue in such a case um, because if you do not have da enough data, many estimation, uh, al many algorithm will not just work. So, you know that that's an issue with uh, high dimension thing. 
uh, and then significance test is is an issue although for prediction purpose uh, you can you know build some of the algorithms but the actual uh, uh, use of model is not just for prediction it's also uh, to know the inference or the relations between variables and for that you need significance test statistical significant tests and that won't uh, uh, be feasible in many cases and many algorithms uh, are not suitable and some algorithms are uh, highly suitable for such cases so that's uh, pretty much what we known as what's known as curse of dimensionality uh, how to test uh, regression classification whether they are working fine or not uh, for regressions the standard uh, statist uh, measures or uh, you know matrix uh, when we look at are the follows r square uh, it explains how much uh, variation the dependent variable is explained by the set of independent variables uh, root mean square error uh, and we also look at uh, the akai key information criteria and squares bayesian criteria um, so these are st commonly used statistics used to select the best model out of you know several regression models. For classification, we used C statistic, accuracy, misclassification error, again AIC and, and BIC as well. Explain the uses of resampling methods. So what are, what what are the uses of resampling methods? And you might have come across many algorithms which uses uh, resampling um, so resampling is about repeatedly drawing samples from training set and refitting the model of interest on each sample in order to obtain the uh, additional information about the fitted model now you have a model in place um, and then you fit that model with several data sets drawn from this training data set and then you see how uh, your model is varying uh, and, and you get a lot of insight about your model when you take different uh, subsample from your training sample and sometimes it also helps you uh, bettering your model or improving your model so some of the common uses are uh, cross validation to ensure that the model is working fine not just in uh, training set also in, uh, in new data on test set so cross validation is one area where you know you take the number of cross validation like k fold cross validations often use resampling techniques where you know k number of samples have been uh, you know <coughs> taken from uh, from your training set to evaluate the model and then you average it out right anyone familiar with cross validation knows that resampling is 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 very much used bootstrapping bootstrapping is used when you know you take a sample but with replacement Right, and bootstrapping is used um, in ensemble modeling. Right, you know, in bagging, boosting, and uh, random forest, and, and many other variations of bagging, boosting. Right, uh, like gradient boosting or XZ boosting, extension boosting. Uh, many such boosting algorithm uses bootstrapping. So thank you so much, and please subscribe to our channel.